Hello and welcome to another episode of the DMG Tech Show. I am your host, Jonathan Parkinson, and in this episode, we're going to be installing wine. No, not the wine that you drink. It's going to be a wine, which is considered a Windows emulator. And when I say an emulator, it kind of works like how you would emulate um, NES, uh, Sega Genesis, or any of those type of game emulators. Except instead of emulating an individual ROM, which those are what those are called for anybody that knows what I'm talking about, this is actually going to be able to emulate actual Windows programs. And for all us Chromebook users, we do know how much we really don't like Windows, especially the blue screen of death, the crashing, all that. Well, the good news is we don't actually need Windows. We can just get it installed, and that way we can run some of the applications that you might be accustomed to using and you might need it for certain things such as work, school, or any of that. And that's where Wine's going to take care of it. So to get Wine installed, I'm going to say open up your terminal and go ahead and enter in this command. Press enter as well as your password. Enter that. Uh, once that's done, go ahead and enter in this. So we're going to update our sources. Uh, that should only take a minute. And once the sources are updated, you're going to type in one final command as well as followed by your password. And it's going to be this. Now once you have everything installed, uh, it, the installation process should take about 15 minutes, 10 minutes, depending on what your internet connection is. And once you have that installed, you can just simply navigate up to Applications, and you will have a Windows um, slot. Now, there's going to be a lot of things to kind of configure in here. Uh, it's kind of how you want to work it. Uh, if you come down here and click in Wine Tricks, this is going to kind of show you the basic understanding of how what you want to really do. So if we go in here and let's say we want to install an app, for example, click OK. And you're going to see here some pre-configured apps. So now this isn't just everything. Uh, you can add other other programs. Uh, just simply download it, download the .exe file as you normally would, and you'll just open it up inside of Win uh, Wine. So you can just go into Applications, Wine, and then you can browse your uh, C drive. And that's all you really need to do to install something. So as you can see, there's some pretty good stuff. Uh, some of the big, f big notable ones uh, for a lot of people is probably going to be something like Office Pro. Uh, you might need the disk. I'm going to click it right now to double check. Uh, if you do ha don't have the disk, you can probably go over to Windows. You can probably find it online on a torrent or any of that type of stuff. Uh, or you might need to uh, get a third-party CD drive, and that's a USB, and plug it in. So as you're seeing it's saying that I'm running a 64-bit. Uh, that's going to be a clean 32-bit. Okay, I'm just going to press OK past all of this to see if it's going to keep hitting that up. So what this is saying right now that I need to insert that Office package, which I don't currently have. I do actually have it. It's a CD somewhere. So I'll see about getting that installed maybe later on, and we'll get that running up there. So again, this is Wine. Wine works really well with something search as play on Linux. So if you want to install Windows-based games, you can do that. Uh, now, I do want to recommend that obviously a Chromebook at this moment in time when I make this video is not the most high spec computer, so it might bog down a little bit, but that's not saying that the future Chromebooks are not going to be a little bit better in specs as obviously um, uh, the items that you need to put in it, such as faster processors, more RAM, is going to get cheaper and cheaper as time goes on. So this, you know, it's going to be more relevant to install Wine onto probably a 4 gigabyte you know, 320, uh, 325 gigabyte hard drive, kind of like how the Acer C710 had, except for the unfortunate part of the Acer C710 is that it was running on a slow C uh, uh, processor, so it didn't really make it functional that well. So there you go. You know, if you do have any questions or comment, as always, leave them in the, the uh, description below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and, and as always, thanks for watching.